morning, good morning, good morning. I am so glad to be with you here today. My name is uh, Reverend Alice Reed. Some people call me Dr. Alice Reed. Yes, I just had the honor. I was just honored with an honorary doctorate of divinity by our uh, international organization. Um, and so I really appreciate all the uh, support and being lifted up by all of you. Um, Michael, that was a beautiful song, and it, it uh, spoke to a lot of what we're talking about today, and I really appreciate that. And I thought I would start off with a reading from the 365 Science of Mind, Ernest Holmes, and share a little bit of today's reading if, you, if you've read this already today. Here's another shot of it. <laughs> there is a divine pattern for humanity, and within this pattern, there is a variation that individualizes each one of us. This is why the Bible says that we should act in accordance with the pattern shown us on the mount, a symbol of high consciousness. When we lift our thought above the confusion of the material world, we become aware of spiritual cause behind all things. Really uh, made a lot of sense when I looked at this whole idea today. We are looking at this grand rising theme. That grand rising is a wonderful Caribbean term that instead of good morning, they say grand rising. And so the idea is that we are rising up. We're rising up in principle. We're rising up in this philosophy. We're rising up in the world. And so today's topic is up until now. As we look at this idea of newness and how we embrace it and how we welcome it, there's an, a wonderful practice that um, perhaps you've heard before. When we get stuck in our thinking, when we get stuck in uh, patterns uh, that aren't serving us, and we hear ourselves say, saying something like, but it's always been this way. If we could say, just instead, put down the, it's always been, and say something like, up until now, it's always been that way. Yeah. Up until now, it's always been that way. Ernest Holmes has some things to write about this topic today of, of up until now, about letting go of old patterns and um, and inviting new patterns. He, he's famous for saying we are bound because we are first free. And what that means is that we are given complete free will to work with this thing called uh, uh, cause, right? Everything's created twice, first in consciousness and then in form. And so we are at complete will to work with the laws of causation. And so we are bound because we're first free. We're bound by our patterns. We're bound by our stories. We're bound by the things that have happened to us in the past. We're, we're bound by the, the lens that we look at life with. And I, I don't know about you, but I remember when I was married and we'd have company come over and suddenly I'd be like, who is that guy and what did you do with my husband? Because he'd be like <laughs> reacting to people and saying things that he doesn't say to me because we get so um, bogged down by our patterns, our patterns of being with each other, our patterns of seeing each other. And, and you know, I, I would say that in jest, but it was always great fun to be able to look at the people I loved through a different lens when I could see them as they were being seen by other people. But sometimes it's hard to put on that new pair of glasses and see life a little differently. Um, but Holmes reminds us, he says, as we have proven that principle is not bound by precedent, in other words, just because it always was doesn't, need, need, doesn't mean that it always has to be. Principle is not bound by precedent. We go into that realm which says, behold, I make all things new, not carrying with us the limited belief of the reason why it cannot be. Change, right? Change is not always easy. And, and I know that, you know, I've heard it from more than one person. Oh, I hate change, <laughs> right? I hate when things change. 
I know that when I am uh, starting some new process or technology, oh, especially computers, right? Oh my God, they update the software again. I gotta learn where all of my favorite things are, right? But you know, that very thing of having to learn new pathways and to, to open up, it opens up new neural pathways in your brain. It allows you to begin to use different parts of your brain that you weren't using. You know, some of us are trying to stay sharp. So maybe that software upgrade is a good thing <laughs> to help us to think in different ways. Up until now, easy to say, harder to practice. Holmes also has this quote, um, Ernest Holmes, who is the founder of Centers for Spiritual Living, he also has this quote, we all have the ability to transcend previous experiences and rise triumphant above them, but we shall never triumph over them while we persist in going through the old mental reactions. And what are those old mental reactions, right? They're the stories we tell ourselves. The stories that we say over and over again. We go to a dinner party and we hear ourselves telling that story. You know the one. <laughs> it's different from mine, but it's yours and you know it, right? You go and you meet some new people and you find yourself telling that story again. My story, one of the stories that I told myself over the last five, six, seven, eight years was that, um, that my husband left me. And when I, when I looked deeper at that story, when I began to, you know, sometimes we just get sick of our stories, don't we? <laughs> and when I started to get a little sick of my own story, I mean, heck, it's been like eight years, right? <laughs> and I'm still telling the same story. But when I began to, to go a little deeper, what I found was that there were other facts and circumstances involved in all of that. There was, it wasn't just one thing that happened, right? There were, there were things that were evolving in our life together, and there were changes that were happening, and I, I wasn't satisfied in the relationship either. And, and I can remember, you know, saying to him at one point, boy, this gal really sounds like she's your twin flame. Like... <laughs> And yet, I carried that story with me for a little while, and I, and I guess I needed it. I think we need our stories sometimes because they comfort us, right? They help us to move through um, challenging times. But a po there comes a point when we have to recognize that it's just a story and that we have an opportunity to tell a different story. I, um, I picked up this book this today, um, yesterday, actually, Eckhart Tolle, A New Earth. It was so funny, uh, Arpad came in and he, was, he had the power of now in his hand. And I thought, oh, I just love when spirit does that. It lines everything up despite Arpad and I haven't talked to each other for a couple weeks. So um, there's a piece in here where Eckhart Tolle talks about something called the pain body. And I want to read a bit of it for you. He's, he's really talking about our past experiences and the things that we move through and how we can sometimes um, sabotage ourselves with our, our stories. And he explains it this way. He says, the remnants of pain left behind by every strong negative emotion that is not fully faced, accepted, and then let go of, join together to form an energy field that lives in the very cells of your body. It consists not just of childhood pain, but also painful emotions that were added to it later in adolescence and during your adult life, much of it created by the voice of the ego. It is the emotional pain that is your unavoidable companion when a false sense of self is the basis of your life. The energy field of old but still very much alive emotion that lives in almost every human being is the pain body. The pain body. It's a, it's a beautiful description, I think, of something that probably resonates with you, right? If you've, if you've been alive on the planet, I'll go, heck, even children, right? <laughs> you, you have your experiences and they're, they're hard to let go of. It's a, it's a pattern of the human condition. 
that we can sometimes hang on to these things. And, and until we make an intentional decision to be conscious, until we make that decision to uh, see something before us and face it, like Holmes said in this earlier quote, that uh, we have the ability to transcend previous experiences and rise triumphant above them, we, it, it doesn't happen by bearing it. <laughs> But maybe some of you, anybody here have the experience where you had a pretty traumatic experience and you buried it and you were just fine and dandy for the rest of your life? <laughs> now, I'm not saying that we have to, you know, live in the dregs, but one of the things that um, I've learned in this teaching, and Emma Curtis Hopkins, who was known as the teacher of teacher, brought that home very clearly, is that we need to face what it is that is in front of us so that we can see where we've mi misplaced our power and then we can relocate that power to something that's more positive and life affirming. We need to relocate it. I, re um, I remember my uh, teacher, Jeffrey Proctor, who um, used to talk about the, the, how we could attach to things, positive experiences and negative experiences. We get all attached to those experiences and, and hold on to them. And even while, the, while it's obvious that the negative experiences that we might hold on to might keep us stuck, the stories that we tell over and over again, sometimes it's the positive experiences as well. And he used this analogy that when you give a dog a bone, a dry bone, and they chew on it and chew on it and chew on it, you're wondering what the flavor is that they're getting out of that bone. And it's the own, the juices in their own mouth, from their own flesh in their, in their mouth. And that's a lot like us when we get hung on to a story and we chew on it and chew on it and chew on it. It's the pain body that feeds on itself over and over again. Not a pretty analogy, but I think it makes the point. <laughs> I think it makes the point that we, we do have this opportunity to look at those places where we sort of dig down and to see why we're holding on. In my case, I had a bigger story than my husband left me. I had a story about how men leave the women in, my li in our lives throughout my ancestry and my descendants. I had a grandmother who was married three times, once to a bigamist, and then, <laughs> and then yeah, who, who really knows anybody who's had that experience? But it happens, I'm here to tell you. Um, and then once to uh, a man who was mentally ill. Uh, her third has husband, she used to say, this one lasts a long time. <laughs> Um, I watched my mother go through divorce as, as uh, and it was the, you know, so, so here's the interesting thing. Sometimes we stop the story too soon and hang on to it, right? Like the story of my grandmother, of uh, men leave her. Well, she married Chris Miller and he ended up being a wonderful husband to her. And the story about my mother being left by my father for another woman. Well, she met the love of her life and had 21 beautiful years with him. It was like, for me, the ideal relationship and partnership. But, but the pain body wants us to stop at that point of pain and hang on to it. And like the dog with the bone, we chew on it for a while because it gives us some kind of um, egoic satisfaction. But if we choose to be conscious, if we choose to allow ourselves to get past the story, well then this idea of up until now, right? Now we've got some power behind it. Now it's not just a platitude of up until now. Now I've done my work. I've, I've seen the patterns that I've hung on to. I've seen the, the stories that I've made up and, um, and that have, I've tried to make part of me and I can let go of them and I can see the whole story. I can see the bigger picture. I can see where, despite the fact that 
something has happened that has been difficult, that I've become stronger. I've, you know, newness has come my way. I've been able to move into a different mindset. So this old pattern of men leave the women in our family no longer serves me. Instead, there's a beautiful opportunity for me to embrace this idea that there, you know, there's an op opportunity for women to meet the loves of their life when the wrong guy gets out of the way, right? <laughs> now, I want to be honest with you. I'm still working with that one. <laughs> I'm still working with that one. But I just, I wanted to demonstrate for you that the stories that we tell ourselves are the things that keep us stuck. And so, if you hear yourself telling that same story to the fifth person and the sixth person, and maybe six months later you're telling it again, and, 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 and here's a real clue. If your friend says, yeah, I remember you telling me that story. <laughs> now, I'm sure I'm the only one that happens to. <laughs> Our opportunity when those kind of things happen is to stay curious. Why am I holding on to this? What's the belief that I have sort of taken on like a cloak that no longer serves me, that I can shed so that I can be open to new possibilities, so that when I say those words up until now, that it's really like I'm opening the door to a, a prison, if you will, that I have self-imposed upon myself from a story that I have told myself so that I can be available for possibility. That's the real power of this philosophy. We, we talk about, you know, change your thinking, change your life. There's a funny title on the used book table, Change Your Home, Change Your Life. <laughs> and it's about feng shui. I thought that was a cute play on, on that phrase. Um, it, you know, this, this isn't like, you know, positive thinking. This is, you, you may see some positive thinking in the philosophy and the principles that we teach, but it's really just the first layer. Like it goes so much deeper than that. We begin to, to explore what's in our consciousness. We begin to explore our experiences. And we look at the way, places that we've gotten stuck, right? Like snagged somewhere. We begin to look at the, those little snags and to consciously untangle them so that we can really move into newness and possibility. Because the truth is, is as Ernest Holmes said, you ca we can triumph above our past experiences. There's a wonderful um, body of work that uh, Byron Katie does, and where she asks, four questions. And so I'm going to invite you now to, to think about, do you have a story? Is there a story that might be lingering somewhere in your consciousness that you've been carrying around? Give yourself a moment to, to bring, you know, you might even want to close your eyes and simply pause and think about any story you might be carrying. Now ask yourself, is it true? Is your story true? And take a deep breath and ask yourself, can you absolutely know it's true? Can you absolutely know it's true? And that should open you up a little bit so that you can be present with this next question. How do you react when you believe that that story is true? How do you react when you believe that story is true? Yeah. 
And then finally, who would you be without that story? Who would you be without that story? Up until now. Yes, that's the, that's the practice here. We begin to look at the things we've held on to. We investigate them. We look and see, if they are they re- is this really true? And who would I be without it? And then we're open to possibility. Then we're open to creativity. Then we're open to the thing called life that wants to express fully by means of you without the story. If you, if that, those four simple questions, Byron Katie, you can Google it. She's got worksheets. It's wonderful work on how we can begin to forgive our past, how we can begin to forgive ourselves for holding on to a story and all the characters in the story, and how we can open up to possibility. The, one of my colleagues wrote this, and I'll close with this. She wrote, while we can be tempted to stay comfortable in our discomfort, reliving the experiences, beliefs, and behaviors of our past, it's time to accept Spirit's invitation into the new, unlimited possibilities of the present moment. Let's set the intention to shine the light of consciousness into our old, less than conscious, habits of thinking and doing. Let's replace our old story of I've always with a new script of up until now. Starting right now, we can honor and bless the past patterns as we gently untangle ourselves from any attachment or resistance. We can forgive what needs forgiving, the bad for the pain it triggered, the good for the, its, its impermanence, ourselves for our own judgments of it all. Today, trusting the truth of spirit in us, through us, as us, we step with courage and curiosity into a brand new now. What's your up until now? That's my invitation to you. Bring it on. Allow newness to come forward. Let go of the story and create a new one. Thank you very much. All right, so let's go ahead and pray. We do this thing called affirmative prayer, sometimes referred to as spiritual mind treatment, and it is a scientific process of moving through our thoughts and shifting to a more unlimited, a more free reality. And so I know in this moment as I, as I speak this word that there is indeed a unlimited amount of possibilities for each one, that each one that hears the sound of my voice is absolutely connected to the divine spirit, that intelligence and wisdom that wants to express fully by each one of us. And so I know as we move through our week, as we investigate our stories, as we become willing to let go of them, that there is a new story afoot a new story that is starting to be told, a story of love and beauty and openness and wholeness that is available to each one. And so I claim in this moment that we have the beautiful shining light of spirit that, that looks through our entire body temple and allows us to become transparent transparent, individualized, divine patterns of spirit walking out our experience in the world, walking out our individuated, beautiful selves in the highest and best way that we can. I give great thanks for this. I know that that power and that presence is in us, as us, and through us in every moment with every breath. And we simply say yes, yes to life, 
yes to freedom, and yes to a new story. So I let this go, and I let it be. And together we anchor this in power by saying, and so it is.